Hello, welcome to Michelle Says Again. I'm Michelle. It's Friday, and so it's time for another hashtag Friday Sews. If you want to hear what I've been working on, what I have coming up next, and a little bit about life, then please stay tuned. Okay, so it's been a couple of weeks since I filmed. I went out of town for a week for work, and then with the holidays and just it, it just got away from me. Um, I realized that I failed miserably at Vlogmas. I think the last one that I posted was like day six or seven. So sue me. I may or may not do it next year. I think I need to have a better plan of attack though. <laughs> so we'll get to that next year. Um, as far as what I've been working on, I finished the details of something that I sewed back in September for the Sew Purple to End ALZ Challenge. This was my collaboration with Fatmata um, from T-I-M-A by F-K. That's her channel. If you're not watching her, I'll link her below. She's adorable. You should go and watch her. Um, but I made the Molly jacket by Fiber Mood. And it is a reversible jacket. On one side is one of my ice dyed fabrics. I love this so much. It's one of my favorites. And on the other side is this wool suiting that I bought from Mood a couple of years ago. I bought it because it was really on sale. I didn't buy it because I loved it. I'm not doing that anymore. I only buy fabrics that I absolutely love. I think that my sister-in-law will like this though. She's more conservative than me, but she does still love purples. So I think she will really appreciate this fabric, but I think she'll also appreciate the ice dyed fabric. So what I had not finished in September was I hadn't done the um, binding around the sleeves and I hadn't put, I hadn't decided how, what kind of closure I was going to put on it. I. I went back and forth and back and forth on all kinds of different closures. Ultimately, what I settled on was a button, just a single button, one big button. This is a lightweight jacket, so it doesn't need to button up all the way. And I thought that putting the buttonhole would be super easy because although it's two layers of fabric, it's not very thick. And I went with a jazzy button and I put one on each side so that regardless of which side she wears it on, there'll be a pretty button. Um, so yeah, so I'm finally finished with this. What I, I was really worried because, um, I had used tracing paper to put marks where like, you know, where the pockets go and where they had the button going and stuff. And I wasn't sure that I could wash this. So I had Googled ways to get that marking out and it said rubbing alcohol. Well, that didn't work. So I crossed my fingers and threw this in the wash, it worked like a charm. The um, the jacket came out with no harm <laughs> and all the markings are gone. So that worked out really well for me. The only issue that I have is that um, this patch pocket is coming unstitched on the corner. And because it is um, reversible and there's a pocket on this side as well, I can't use my machine to stitch that back down. So I'm gonna have to hand sew that, which shouldn't be a big deal. But once that's done and I press it, then I can ship it off to her. Um, we don't exchange Christmas gifts. Like my brother sends them, th my brother, my husband sends his sisters gifts, um, but uh, I'm not worried about it not being there in time for Christmas. I also made some neck warmers. Hold on. So I had shown you the triangle scarves that I made, the double-sided ones. One side was faux fur, the other side was a cabled knit. I made one for Andra and I made one for a friend of mine that I work with. And those were in a cream color. So the, the faux fur was a cream color. Um, I forget what animal they called it. And then the, um, the cabled knit was a cream color and it looked luxurious. It looked gorgeous if I do say so myself. Well, another friend of ours was there um, when my friend was wearing hers. And after we got home from our work trip, she texted me and asked if I would make three of them for her to give as gifts. Normally, I would say no. 
but it's an easy thing to make. So um, I knew she would appreciate it and I and she paid for the materials so I didn't charge her any um, I didn't charge her for my time or anything because she is a very good friend and it literally it took to make three of them took me between cutting them and sewing them took a couple of hours um, the cutting took way more time than the sewing um, so I'm okay with uh, not charging but it's not something that I would want to do on a regular basis so I bought all the fabric to make the three for her they were out of the cream colored knit and they didn't have enough of the cream colored faux fur so I went with a different color palette and um let me see if I have that so I I went with grays so I have uh they had quite a bit of this gray cabled knit it was on sale as it was on sale as fabric always is at Joanne and I went with this gray faux fur and they just looked gorgeous together. This feels just as good and amazing as the other one. And I have quite a bit of both of these left over. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough of that and I thought about making a couple of more gifts. So I ended up buying some, I think they call it Lux Fleece. It's this really soft and furry fleece. And I got this um, leopard print. Would you call this a snow leopard? I don't know. But I ended up making neck warmers with the, um, the gray knit fabric and the um, leopard Lux fleece. And look how cozy that is and it's reversible you can wear it either way i made three of these um for my three sister-in-laws so i have uh oh no i made three of them two of them for my two sister-in-laws my husband's sisters and one of them for somebody that works for me so um yeah i followed adam's tutorial on how to make a snood it's super easy um, I did modify it a little bit. He has you um, kind of taper in the top of it so that when it's snuggled up, it's a little bit closer in here than it is down here. Um, I made my first one that way, and I don't know if I didn't cut it wide enough or not, but it was a little bit snug on me, so I just changed it up and made it straight, and I think that works fine as well. It's really about the, the sewing technique that matters in and as far as how you join the side seams. So um, I will link Adam's channel below if you're interested in making one of these. But yeah, I made three of these and um, I just need to get them in the mail. I'm terrible at getting things in the mail. So that's all that I have sewn. However, I've been on vacation this week, staycation, whatever you wanna call it, I haven't had to work and I spent the entire week in my craft room, but I wasn't sewing. I pulled out my Cricut machine, which I've had for a couple of years. When we moved in here, I knew I didn't expect to use it very much, so I actually had it tucked away in the closet. But Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room had asked if I could um, make something for her to iron onto a onesie for her new grandson. And um, so I pulled out my Cricut and once I started playing with it and I made the little thing that she asked for, I kind of started going a little crazy. I started binge watching some YouTube videos. Um, if you have a Cricut and you have some people that you love to watch, let me know. But I've been binge watching Jennifer Maker. She does fantastic tutorials. I've been watching Beth Adili. I think that's what her channel is. Um, Jennifer Maker does a lot of tutorials and she does like specific projects and walks you through it from A to B. Beth Adili tends to um, be a little bit more chatty and she shows you kind of her process for making, but it's really more about the inspiration, the inspiration for the projects themselves. Um, Cause she, uh, she doesn't show you what she's doing with the Cricut. She just kind of shows you the end result from what she's taken out of the Cricut and then what she does with that on her projects, but still a great source of inspiration. 
Um, I've been watching Design to the Nines. She does a ton of different kinds of DIY. Again, she does some things with her Cricut, but she doesn't show you what she's doing on the Cricut. She just takes the end result and applies it to her project. But it's inspiration. Um, I have watched Maker's Gonna Learn. I haven't been watching him this week, but I do like that channel as well. Um, I have a few others saved, but I haven't really watched them yet. So let me know in the comments if you have a Cricut and you have some favorite YouTubers that you watch, let me know. I am having fun. So um, yeah, so I expect to be peppering in some Cricut projects into my channels this year. I will label the topics appropriately so that if you're not interested, you don't get stuck logging in and watching something that you're not interested in. Um, but I do plan on doing some. So what is up next? So I still haven't finished my collaboration with Carol from So Carol from September for So Purple to End ALZ. It's the only project I haven't finished. It's all cut out. All I have to do is sew it together and it's probably going to take me less than an hour to sew together. So that is my next priority for sure. Um, I also am planning, where is it? So I got this gorgeous fabric from Trish at Pinky's Farm earlier this year. I, I love this fabric and it's one of those ones, I don't have a lot of precious fabrics. I have a lot of fabrics, fabrics that I love, but not many that are precious. This one is precious. So I wanted to make sure that I had the right project for it. And I just had in my head that it was gonna be like this really fabulous top, like the Kent woven tunic from Style Arc or um, something in that vein, maybe the Kenny top from Style Arc. What I had, I had an epiphany though. I love the Bellbird top from the Sewing Revival. I've made seven versions of it. In fact, this dress <laughs> is a hacked version of the Bellbird top. I have the pattern so that it, I've got it adjusted so that it fits me. It's the length that I like, and it's the perfect pattern to show off a gorgeous fabric like this. And I need more tops to wear while I'm working from home that I can wear with leggings or jeans or under a, dress, a pinafore, whatever. This is a perfect top for that. So that's my next project after finishing my collab with Carol. So Trish, I'm finally gonna, finally gonna use this gorgeous hunk of fabric. Um, so that's what's coming up next. That and a lot more cricketing. <laughs> um, all right, so now life. Um, last two weeks have been kind of low key. Um, I got home from Ohio. My husband and I, you know, we don't do a lot. We don't have any friends down here. I mean, I've got my friends. I've got Jen and Carmen that live down here and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but as a couple, we don't have any friends down here. So, um, we just spent time together with the two of us and Hercules and, um, this week in particular, I've spent a ton of time in the craft room. Um, that's about it. We didn't do anything for Christmas. It was actually really nice. We stayed home. It's honestly the first Christmas pretty much since we got married that we got to spend it all day together. My husband uh, retired from the State Department the year that we got married and then he was still in his 40s. So he had to move on to a second career and it took him a while to find his footing, but he landed in the hospitality industry. And so he's had to work pretty much every Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and Christmas pretty much since we've been married. So while I may have seen him for a few hours on those days, we haven't had too many. I think we've had two or three Thanksgivings all day, but out of 17 years, that's not a lot. And I, we haven't had very many Christmases, um, if any, where we've gotten to spend the entire day together. So we just spent the day together, just chilling, um, watching TV, um, spending time together and with Hercules. So it was nice. I really enjoyed it. Um, he cooked um, just a nice simple meal. And 
So today I got to go and have lunch with Jen and Carmen. So Jen from Today and Jen Sewing Room, Carmen from Carmen Salome. They live down the road from me, um, like 40 minutes or so. And so we went and met kind of in the middle um, and we enjoyed several hours just catching up, chit-chatting. We had the best time. I got to tell you, the ladies that I've met and men <laughs> um, that I've met through doing this YouTube channel and just through the sewing community in general has really made a positive impact on my life. When I think about like, for example, I was talking about a specific comment that was left on one of my videos that kind of, it didn't upset me, but it was just like, really, why'd you have to say that? And when I used the, I told Jen and Carmen the exact words that were used, Carmen is like, it's all about intonation. And I said it the way that I heard it in my head and she said it in a positive tone and I was like, yes, exactly. I need to do a better job of assuming positive intent and those ladies bring that out in me and I just feel like they inspire me to be a better person and so being around them is just uplifting. And I can say that about Jen, about Carmen, about Mari, about Andra, um, about any of the people that I've met through this sewing uh, experience, all of these people inspire me to be a better person. And I'm grateful for that. Um, so here's a picture of us from our lunch. And uh, let me share with you a couple of things that Jen brought to me. So, you know, she does her, um, her trips and on one of her trips, she went to a place, I can't remember which place she said she got this from, but it's a bunch of dye. So um, these are just little, we don't know what kind of dyes they are. I'm gonna look into it a little bit, but it's a pa they're just little packets of, um, of powder dye. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see what this says, but it looks like, um, let me see. This is, I think this is my kind of dye. It looks like the, the fabric types that it is recommending are all natural fibers. And all of the dyes that I use are for natural fibers. This is fantastic. I have lavender, light blue, salmon, taupe, aqualon blue, robin's egg blue, and peacock. I think I'm gonna be able to do something really fantastic with these. Thank you, Jen. And also in the pack was two Rit dies. These look old. I don't think this is what the Rit die boxes look like. I haven't bought Rit die in forever, but um, I don't think this is what their boxes look like anymore. And this is a navy blue and a black. So this is interesting. This package says that it's for all washable fabrics, including some polyesters and acrylic blends. That's interesting because, oh, not 100% polyester though, or acrylic, so it's gotta be a blend. Um, that's interesting because most of the dyes that I use, um, you can't really, I mean, if it's got polyester in it, it's gotta be a really small percentage. So, um, cool. Thank you, Jen. She also, brought me this gorgeous piece of ITY. Look at those colors. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh. I can totally, this is like, these are perfect summer colors. I can't wait to figure out what I'm gonna make with that. Gorgeous. And then we just had such a great time visiting, um, catching up. We hadn't seen each other in person in quite some time. Um, and I just love those ladies. We had such a great time. So I don't know if you remember this or not. This is my journal that I was going to put all of my sewing makes in for 2022. Now, when I went in to get caught up <laughs> and I was flipping through the pages, the last entry that I had was from February. So I decided to start from scratch. I ripped out the few pages that I had in there already because they were all handwritten. They were kind of sloppy. I hadn't gotten my rhythm down. And because I was playing with my Cricut, and if you don't know, a Cricut also is a writing machine. It's not just a cutting machine. 
So what I decided to do was draft up a template and draw and use my writing utensils in the Cricut to um, draw out a template to put in my journal. So what I did, first of all, is I went through my Instagram and I just listed by month everything that I've made for the year. I started in January and went through my three uh, neck warmers. I had to start with my old hijacked account that I still can't get access to. And then I moved over to my newer account and I wrote everything down and I had 55 items. Now there are some things that I've made this year that never made it onto Instagram. I can't remember what they are. So on, if that doesn't happen, they're not going in the book. That's okay. If I loved them enough, they would have gone on Instagram and I would have a record of it. So anyway, these are my 55 pages. What I did, um, and they're all, they're not all the same color, obviously. I didn't use the same color ink on all of them. I wanted to mix it up so that I didn't run out of any color. Um, but I used a mix of um, metallic markers, glitter gel pens, um, and that's pretty much it. So um, I put the month and the year at the top. You might not be able to see, maybe that's not the best one to use. I put the month and the year that it was made. I put the name of the pattern and the designer, and then this is my template. So I have this really beautiful scroll work in the corner, and then I'm gonna write the size, the fabric that I used, any modifications that I made, any notes for future makes, um, what my YouTube title was, if I posted one, and what date I posted it on Instagram. And um, those things I'm gonna hand write in, um, but I just wanted to get the, the date and the pattern information. And um, so yeah, so I have all of my makes now on here. So now what I have to do is go through and use um, some of those uh, roller tapes that you can use, the, the roller adhesive put them in. I've got to print pictures of all of these to go on the other side because every layout is going to be one make um, so that I can, because I want photographs and maybe if I have it, a fabric swatch. Um, so yeah, so that's my, that's um, going to be like nighttime watching TV project. Um, and that was fun. That took like a day and a half. <laughs> uh, so this is New Year's. A new year is coming upon us. I failed miserably at my make nine for 22. Um, I probably won't do a recap on that, but it did get me thinking about what I wanted to do. Did I want to do a make nine for 23? Um, what are my plans for 23? What kind of changes do I want to make to my channel, if any? And as far as I haven't gotten through all of those questions, by the way. I just started I just started asking myself these things. For the Make 9, I do want to do another Make 9, but I'm going to shift gears and I am going to make things that I need and will wear. And for me, what that means is tops. My day-to-day -day attire is a pair of leggings with a nicer top on top, but that could still be worn with the leggings in case I want to go outside in the world. So that means wearable tops. They are not super fancy. So I went through the patterns that I already own and that I have loaded in Trello. And I made a list of like options because I didn't want fancy tops. I didn't want things that are, are I'm not going to pull out to wear with leggings. Um, I mean, I might make some of those things, but they're not going to be part of my make nine. So I went through all the possibilities and then I prioritized them and I have my list of nine and I'm going to share that in a separate video coming up. So as far as the rest of my plans, I'm not really sure yet. I have a planner that I bought somewhere. I want to start laying out some plans, but I don't want to get overly aggressive because I feel like I kind of let myself down by making some promises 
earlier in the year this year that I didn't follow through on. So I want to be a little bit more realistic about my time. So I need to think that through before I come up with a, an actionable plan. So anyway, I can't wait to talk to you guys all in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are on anything that I talked about. Let me know what your plans are for New Year's. We're usually asleep by the time the ball drops, so we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't have any special plans for New Year's Day um, other than crafting because I'm off until Tuesday. So um, yeah, let me know what what's going on with you. Whatever your recent makes, what do you have planned for New Year's? Did you have a fantastic Christmas? Let me know. Wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope all those, I hope you're not stuck in any of those blizzard areas. Um, I hope you're able to get some sewing in and I will talk to you next time. Bye.